Hey guys, this is Miss Carr. Hope you're having a great summer. Um, honestly, during fourth nine weeks, we luckily did not miss much. We had some other fun activities that we would have done in Illustrator and Photoshop. Um, but as far as like the things we had to cover in our curriculum, thankfully we had covered most of it. Uh, but one thing I wish that we had gone a little bit more in depth with is typography. Now, typography means the study of type. Now, we talked a little bit about appropriate font choices and how font choices, um, like whatever font we choose to, to use in a design, that it, it carries a message. It kind of tells something about the image of that business or that organization. And so we had talked about making sure that we choose appropriate fonts for different uh, purposes okay and making sure that that purpose matched um but typography like if you studied graphic design in college you'll take a whole course just on typography now this first part we're going to look at are the parts of a typeface so most of the time we think of letters and and words parts of the font is just like you know letters on the screen but you can take those individual letters and you can break them down into parts. Now, we're not going to go all the way in depth into all the parts like they do. But I feel like these five parts are some important parts for us to understand. Okay. So those five parts are the baseline, the X height, the cap height, the ascender, and the descender. And so let's go look at a diagram and I'll actually draw on it here. So we have this example right here. And so the first thing we want to talk about is the baseline. Now the baseline is this line that goes across the bottom where it looks like the letters rest. And I'm going to draw that again because I didn't get it wide in the right place there we go that's a little better but that right there that's the baseline okay where the letters rest now the second one that we're going to do is the cap height now we only have one capital letter here and that's the t but the cap height is exactly what it sounds like it's the height of the capital letters so my line for my cap height is going to be here, okay, so there's my cap, cap height, and then we have our X height. Now if y'all look at this word typography here, we don't have an X. So what is the X height referring to? Well, the X height is referring to the height of the lowercase letters, okay? So I'm going to go through here, and I'm going to draw a line, but this time I'm going to make it a dotted line to show my X height. This should be looking familiar to you guys. Okay? So red baseline, blue cap height, the yellow dotted line is the X height. Now, do you guys know where you recognize this from? Do y'all remember in first grade kindergarten when you first learned to write and you guys had those special tablets that you had to learn to write in? Uh, but this is what that's like, okay? And 
that's part of the reason why you guys learn to write on that. So you would learn to form your letters correctly. All right. So we have two more parts to talk about. We have the ascenders. Now, ascenders only apply to letters that are lowercase. Okay. Now, ascenders are parts of the letters that rise above the X height. Now, if we go across right here, the only lowercase letter that we have that rises above the X height is this part of the H. So that part right there. So that part is an ascender. Now, there are other letters that have ascenders. Um, for instance, the letter B would have an ascender. The letter D would have an ascender. The letter I, that little dot up there, that would be the ascender uh, for the letter I. And I could keep going, but you guys get the idea. Any lowercase letter that part of the letter rises above the X height has an ascender. Now, the last part is a descender. Now, descenders are only on lowercase letters as well. But the descender is part of a lowercase letter that goes below the baseline. Okay, so remember the red line is the baseline. So if I go across, you see the Y goes below the baseline. So it has a descender. The P has a descender. G. P again. And then Y. So all of those are descenders. Now there's other letters that have descenders as well. I know, for instance, that we don't have the letter Q on here. So it would have a descender. Now, here's a special character. What about the letter J? All right. So J is special because it has both a descender and an ascender. And it's the only letter that has both. All right. So that's our example of our topography diagram. Remember, red is baseline. Blue is cap height. The yellow dotted line is the X height. And then the parts of the letters above the X height are ascenders. Parts of the letters below the baseline are descenders. All right, so whenever we were working with our designs and things, we most often use type in Photoshop or uh, Microsoft Publisher. Uh, but we're going to focus here on Photoshop. Now, it says in Photoshop, we refer to text as type. And then it says that type usually appears sparingly in designs, so its appearance is important, okay? You don't want to have type there just for the sake of it being there. It needs to have a purpose and it needs to help convey whatever message it is that you want your design to, to give to people. Okay. So it says that uh, the text should be limited, direct, and to the point, And it should be large enough for easy reading, but it should not distract from the central message. So here's a quote. Words can express an idea, but the type is what drives the point home. And that was the skill that we practiced when you guys were choosing the appropriate font for all those uh, fake business names that I had made up or whatever. Um, so you can choose the wrong font, use the wrong type, and it can co completely 
mess up the message, okay? Um, things that we can change with our type to help alter our message. We can change the font itself. Um, we can change the size and we can change the color. And we also talked about how color carries a message as well. If you remember, we talked about the color red. We think about that color for like love or for hospitals, emergency, health kind of things. Um, so color carries a message as well. All right. So we're still talking about type. We're still talking about font. So we have three categories of fonts, and these are kind of um, categorizing them based on a style, a design style that these fonts have. Now, the first one is called a serif font. And serif fonts have tails, feet, or strokes at the end of some of the characters. So let me go and show you what I'm talking about. All right, so here's my example here with my serif font. So the little feet that we're talking about are the little tails, are these little things here at the ends of the letters. Okay, so those are the little feet. Um, now you'll notice that the letter E does not have any little feet. Now, sometimes it may have one depending on what font you choose, but in this particular one, it does not. But you can kind of compare that to this font, font down here on the sans serif. You can see that we don't have these little feet at the end that I was talking about. Okay. Um, So serif fonts, they have the tail, foot, or stroke at the end of some characters. Now, what do we use these serif fonts for? They're generally used in text passages because for some reason, the tails make it easier for the eye to recognize the words. So if you guys start noticing anytime you read a book, like that you checked out from the library or a novel that you bought, um, textbooks, uh, if you're looking at a web page that has like an article on it, those main areas of text are going to be serif fonts more than likely. Okay. Now, the other type of font is a sans serif font. And these are the ones that don't have tails or feet. Okay. So they don't have those little extensions at the ends of the, the letters. Okay. Now, these are commonly used for headlines. You can make them bigger, bolder, and they stand out, okay? They're easier to read from a distance. Um, and so that's something, you know, when you're trying to catch people's attention, you want them to be able to read it quickly and it to catch their attention without them paying a whole lot of attention, okay? And then a third category are decorative fonts. These could be fonts that are really stylized, like it might look like cursive handwriting, or there's a font where it looks like um, the letters are striped, things like that. All right, so most of the time when we design things in graphic design, our goal is to a lot of times have our design printed out for people to look at. So something that's important is for us to be able to kind of estimate how large type might be once it's printed out on paper. Um, you know, before a lot of times you might change it, print it, you're like, oh, it needs to be a little bigger. Um, no, it needs to be a little smaller and you might just have to print it multiple times just to kind of see if you got what you wanted. But you can kind of use this right here that I have on the screen to help you estimate. So type is measured in points. 
and you guys are familiar with that you know we choose the size it's 12 points or 14 points or 20 points okay but you can estimate the size because one inch is equal to 72 points so if you type something on your screen you make it size 72 72 points and you print that out you could get a ruler and measure and those letters would be one inch tall okay so you could use that you know you may not want your letters to be one inch but if you wanted them to be half an inch you could say 72 divided by 2 and you know that that's 36 and so you can kind of use that to estimate and make sure you get the correct size type all right so another way that we can categorize our type is by how the letters are spaced so we have monotype spacing and monotype if y'all remember back to biology i know you guys talk about these pre prefixes mono means one okay so you also hear about people who talk in a monotone voice and they talk with one one tone in their voice and it's very it doesn't change a lot um so monotype spacing is going to have one amount of spacing for each character and it says each character occupies the same amount of space so if you think about how letters are shaped you know you have some letters that would be wide like i have examples here like the m or the w would be wide letters just because of the way they're written okay um and then you have skinny letters like the i or the L. Now you would think the skinny letters wouldn't get as much space. They don't need as much space, okay? But in monotype spacing, regardless of what size the letters are, they all get the same amount of space, okay? And we'll look at an example in just a second. And then we have proportional spacing. And this is where each character takes up a different amount of space depending on its size. So proportional spacing, it does that where the skinny letters get a small amount of space and the wide letters get a wider amount of space, okay? So let's go look at an example. All right. So I have my two examples here. I have monospace and I have proportional. Now I use the same word here. I use Vikings just so you guys could see the difference. So if we go across right here, we can see that even the capital letter V, the lowercase I, lowercase k have i again n g and s each one of those letters is pretty much the same width okay it might work better if we got out a ruler and measured it but if you compare that to the vikings down here underneath proportional you can just tell just by looking you see this i compared to that one, how much less room it takes up. So on this one, so the V's kind of wide, but the I's narrow, the K's kind of wide, the I's narrow, the N, the G, and the S, but you guys can see there what I'm talking about how the letter I is skinny, so it gets less space.
All right, so we have monospaced and we have pro proportional typefaces, and those are just um, created when the, the font is designed, okay? We can't do anything to change a font. Like if you guys wanted to change Arial into a monospaced font, you can't do it. It's, it's because that's Arial's already designed to be a proportional typeface, okay? But what we can change is the tracking, okay? So tracking inserts a uniform amount of space between characters. So if you guys think about holding your hand up and then when you spread your fingers apart, that's kind of like putting space in between the letters using tracking, okay? It doesn't matter what the letters are. It's going to add the same amount of space to each letter but you can use that to kind of just spread out a word and make it a little bit wider um, if you don't want to make the font bigger okay now you can also change the vertical spacing of text tracking is horizontal because it's the space in between each letter but you can also change the vertical spacing and so this ends up being the spacing in between lines of text okay um so you can see here's an example here where the vertical spacing was not changed and then here is an example where it was and you can see this blank space in between these two lines okay so this was the leading change the leading now the tracking and the leading can be changed at the character palette, okay? Now, it's got some other options there that you can change as well. Um, I know you can change bold, italics. Um, you can do strike through. You can also change the size there. Um, you can change the font style. But you have that character palette where you can do a few more changes. Okay, now another way we can also change um, type layers is to add effects. And you guys remember when we did that activity, the text effects, and you guys did your names and we did one that made it look like it was gold metal and another one that made it look like it was silver. And we had that one that was supposed to look like plastic. So this is what that's talking about, that we can add effects. And to do that, we would right click on our layer and choose blending options. Now, some of the options that were there that we use to get those different effects, we use drop shadows, inner outer glow, bevel and emboss, strokes, among other things. And then the last thing that we can do to change the way our text looks is that we can warp text. Now, if you guys remember um, Word Art from Microsoft Word, um, warping text is kind of like Word Art. Um, it allows you to twist, stretch, and distort your type. And you guys can see a couple examples here of what warped text looks like. Now, the good thing about using warp text, if we needed to change what it said or if we misspelled something, it's still where we can edit it. We can still click in there and we can still type and change what it says. All right. So you guys have a couple of activities in your packet. The first one is this typography diagram. Now, it uses this sentence, the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. Now, that's the sentence you'll see used in uh, especially things with typography a lot because that sentence has every letter in the alphabet in it, okay? But you guys are going to use colored pencils, markers, colored ink pens, crayons, whatever you have that you have writing utensils that are in different colors. But you're going to use that to mark the diagram as described below. Be sure to fill in what color you use to mark the diagram. So right here in this box, if you're going to draw the baseline in with blue, you'll just write the word blue right there. 
And then you'll come up here and on that sentence, you'll draw in the baseline in that color. Okay. Um, but you'll do that for all of those five parts that we talked about. You'll draw on the baseline, draw on the cap height, draw in the X height, and then you'll circle the A cinders and circle the D cinders. Okay. Then the other activity you have is this serif or sans serif. And y'all can see it. It just looks like a bunch of words that say the same thing, and they do. But they're all in different fonts, okay? So you guys have to look at it, and you have to decide what type of font is that. Is it a serif font or a sans serif font? And so I've got this example here so we can look at it closer. So remember, serif fonts have the feet. So you can see here on this one that this one has feet. Okay, so this is a serif font. So I'm going to circle that one that it is serif because it's not sans serif, okay? So then let's look at this one up here. So you see this one does not have any little feet. So remember, sans means without. So you could kind of say sans serif means without feet. Um, so this one doesn't have feet. So this one is sans serif, okay? That's all you're going to do on this activity. You're going to go through and look at each one. And if it's a serif font, you'll circle the word serif. It's a sans serif font, you'll circle the word sans serif. All right, so that's the end of this lesson. I hope you guys continue to have a good summer. Um, see you soon.